In this video, we're going to explain the polymerase chain reaction or PCR. So let's start off with why would we use PCR? What's it for? Well, PCR is used to amplify DNA, which basically just means make lots of copies of a DNA fragment or a DNA molecule. So for example, if you've got a small amount of DNA that you collected maybe from a crime scene, you want to make more copies of that DNA, you're going to use PCR to amplify it or replicate that DNA in vitro. So this is happening outside of a living cell and there are key differences between PCR and in vivo DNA replication, which obviously happens inside a cell. Now, what do we need for PCR? Well, we use a machine called a thermocycler, but you don't really have to remember that. But what are you going to put in there? Well, you're obviously going to need the DNA fragment, the fragment that you actually wish to amplify or make many more copies of. You're going to need nucleotides, DNA nucleotides of all four types. And when I say all four types, I mean nucleotides with an adenine base, with a thymine base, with a guanine base and with a cytosine base. You're also going to need primers, which are short, single stranded pieces of DNA that will be complementary to the start and end of the template strands of the fragment you're going to amplify and you're going to need DNA polymerase. And just a note about this DNA polymerase, this DNA polymerase is called TAC polymerase. Now you don't have to remember that, but you should remember that this DNA polymerase is thermostable, which means it won't be denatured by the high temperatures, such as the 95 degrees Celsius that is used in PCR. It shouldn't be denatured. Um, obviously, if we used human DNA polymerase with an optimum temperature of 37, that would definitely be denatured. Right, let's go through the process itself. So this is a cycle which will be repeated many times, each time doubling the number of DNA fragments. I'm going to start here. So stage one, in the thermocycler, we're going to increase the temperature to 95 degrees. Why? Well, this is to break the hydrogen bonds between the complementary bases and separate the two strands. So it's kind of like doing the job of DNA helicase, isn't it? Inside a cell, when we have DNA replication, it's DNA helicase that breaks those hydrogen bonds. Here we're using a really high temperature, around 90 to 95 degrees Celsius, breaks the hydrogen bonds, between the complementary base pairs, separates the two strands. Obviously, both strands will act as templates, just like in normal DNA replication. Then we're going to decrease the temperature to around 55, 60 degrees Celsius. Why? So obviously, we're cooling. We're cooling the temperature and this allows hydrogen bonds to reform. And what's going to happen at this temperature is the primers anneal or join or form hydrogen bonds with the um, template strands. And I'll just show you a little picture of that. So here's my DNA. I'll show you the sugar phosphate backbone and the bases just really simply. Obviously, I've already broken the hydrogen bonds between the bases. I've separated the two strands. So one primer is going to anneal here. And remember, a primer is a short, single-stranded piece of DNA. But this primer will have a base sequence complementary to the bases at the start of this strand. And the other primer is going to anneal here. So a different type of primer will be needed. This primer needs to have a complementary base sequence to the sequence of bases at this end of this DNA strand. OK, why do we want these primers, by the way? Now, I have just filmed a TikTok on this if you've not seen it. But when those primers anneal, it's going to stop the original strands from just rejoining. Because if the original strands just rejoined, you're not going to replicate the DNA, right? Once those primers have annealed, then those original DNA strands should not rejoin. Also, the binding of primers does provide a starting point for DNA polymerase. So DNA polymerase can then attach 
here and here and can start joining nucleotides together on the new strands. DNA polymerase can't start that strand from scratch, right? You need to have a starting point. You need to have a small section of DNA that is double-stranded so the DNA polymerase can attach and start adding the new nucleotides on or start joining them together and building that new strand by catalyzing the formation of phosphodiester bonds. So primers are really important and obviously primers are not used in normal DNA replication inside a cell. So that's another difference. Once the primers have annealed, we're then going to increase the temperature to around 72 degrees Celsius. Why? Well, this is the optimum temperature for this DNA polymerase, which we've already said is TAC polymerase, a thermostable polymerase enzyme taken from bacteria that live in hot springs. That's the optimum temperature. So at that temperature, DNA polymerase will join nucleotides together. It will start catalyzing the formation of phosphodiester bonds between the nucleotides and joining these nucleotides together like this to build the new strands. And then obviously this is gonna be repeated. And with each cycle, we're gonna double the number of DNA fragments, remembering that you can calculate how many fragments you will get by doing two to the power of n, where n is the number of cycles. So for example, if you have five cycles of PCR, if you start with one DNA fragment, it would be two to the power of five. After five cycles, you would end up with 32 fragments of DNA. The final thing I just want to talk to you about in this video is why might PCR not give you the number of DNA fragments that you expect to get? Like, why might you not end up with 32? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The reaction could run out of primers. If it runs out of primers, then DNA replication is going to stop. It could run out of nucleotides. Again, if we run out of nucleotides, DNA replication is going to stop. It could be that this really high temperature actually damages some of the DNA fragments. And it could be that at this really high temperature, the DNA polymerase, even though it is thermostable, after many cycles, it may start to denature. So four possible reasons as to why PCR might not give you the expected number of DNA fragments at the end of those cycles. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if it has helped and make sure you're subscribed to see more videos in the next few days to help you prepare for your A-level exams.